Keisha. There once was Truvy's Beauty Parlor, where six women of different ages and stages of their lives would meet not only to have their hair curled and poofed and colored and teased, but to share their lives with each other. And when they walked out of Truvy's Beauty Parlor, they not only looked better, they felt better. They were friends. And when six actresses of different ages and stages of their lives met in Natchitoches, Louisiana in the summer of 1998 to film Steel Magnolias, it took about 30 seconds. And they too were friends. Can't stop talking, constantly laughing, telling each other their intimate secrets, mostly off-color raucous, always together, friends. Each of us, we had a, a position in the group, not just our characters that we played, we had a sort of role. Ridali was the storyteller that kept us laughing and with a stroke of a word kept the men off balance. Julia was the baby, Daryl was the wayward hippie, Olympia was Mother Earth, the most sensible, and then there was Shirley, who seemed to me to be the center. I mean, this was Shirley McLean after all. I had worked with a lot of legendary men. I didn't get to work with a lot of legendary women. Oh, hell, there aren't a lot of legendary women. But Shirley MacLaine was then and is now legendary. She was instantly Cheryl, just Cheryl. And she's wickedly funny and incredibly smart, full of thought, and always interested in you. She was so interested in me, I was almost interested in me. <laughs> and I learned so much from her. She, she never, ever, ever hangs on to the past. She's unafraid of the future. And I sat there and I, I listened to all of her carefully gathered wisdom. I remember every piece of advice she ever gave me, like that scene you saw a piece of in the cemetery, which went on and on and on and on. We, all of us, cried our eyes out for three long, hot days. Wait, you know what? Come on, let's face it. I cried the most. I cried the most. <laughs> but these wonderful actors were right there with me, day after day, hour after hour, tear after tear. And Shirley, whose eyes had turned a color of red I just simply had never seen before, she seemed to reach this emotional pitch with such skill and ease, and I felt like I was trying to pass a kidney stone. <laughs> and she said, Sal, come over here. Look, don't kill yourself. Honestly, if you go dry, and who doesn't? You can use a little of this. And she... <laughs> She opened her handkerchief that she had wadded in her hand, and it was a big glob of mentholatum rub. And she said, you know what? You just smell it, and your eyes will water. And if that stops working, just stick it right in your eyes. <laughs> and she proceeded to do that. She is generous beyond a fault. She's a one-of-a-kind original and an extraordinary actor. She's a, a renowned world traveler who collects people. They are her most valued treasures. And I always have been and always will be so very proud to be included in her lifelong collection. Congratulations, Shirley. I love you to pieces. <laughs>